lean on the everlasting pews. Well, Diana, you sing like a Baptist. You knew how to go leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Listen to the book of Ruth and its harvest song. Listen to the book of Ruth and get a dose of what the Lord God intended when he looked down on a confused Adam and says, you know, it's not good for him to be alone. I'm going to create him a helper who corresponds to him. You know, you've heard the complaint, the newspapers are only filled with bad news. Well, biblical audiences heard the same thing. They heard the stories about the book of Judges. The book of Judges, and there's a story about Samson and how he kept chasing after Delilah to his peril. And then there's other stories in the book of Judges. I'm not sure you know of them. There's a story about a man named Jephthah who kills his I even hate to say it. But anyway, he kills someone in his family. And there's another story in the book of Judges about a man named Abimelech. And he kills his brothers. So the book of Judges was this kind of wild west, outlaw, frontier time in the Bible. And they tell stories about it, about how there was no one in charge and everyone did whatever they wanted. And then a wise and cunning storyteller said, let me tell you another story about the time of the judges. About the time when the judges judged. And that is a story about Ruth and Naomi and Boaz. It was just like one of those radio tales from Paul Harvey on page two, the good side of the news. It was just like an O. Henry story about one person that cuts and sells her hair, the other person that sells his watch chain to complete and give each other the special gift. Listen to the book of Ruth and its harvest song. You know, we live in a faithless age with false glorification. All of a sudden, I hear soldiers called warriors, ball players, superstars, and any knucklehead who can croon and carry a tune is now called an idol. Listen to the book of Ruth and its stories about golden people about people who had glory inside them that still shines to this day. Ordinary people who had needs and lacks and who completed each other. So for the next three weeks, we're going to feed on the barley harvest of the book of Ruth. Three slices of the bread of life, Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz. So, let's review the story. As you heard from Diana, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in ancient Judah. There was a famine in the town of Bethlehem. That's where the story begins. And so a man named Elimelech and his wife Naomi went to a foreign country, Moab, looking for following harvest following rain, searching for bread. There's a kind of irony here because Bethlehem, does anybody know what it means? I've got some seminarians here today. This is a test. Who knows what Bethlehem means? House of what? Bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. So it says here there was a famine in the house of bread. 
it's like saying there were no beans in Boston. And they have to go to Moab. But then, and they were there 10 years, and Naomi and Elimelech's sons, Machlon and Kilion, took Moabite wives. Now, this story is almost like it was written by Charles Dickens, because Mahlon means weak, and Kilion means wasted. So something tells me those names got forgotten, and the storyteller put these names in, because I don't know any parents who would actually name their boys weak and wasted. <laughs> so from the first minute they're introduced in this song, we can tell these guys are not going to stick around. And they took Moabite wives, and one was named um, Orpah. And I think you know of someone in our society who was named for Orpah. Only the woman writing down the birth certificate got two of the consonants twisted, and Orpah became Ophrah. So we have Orpah and Ruth. But then Elimelech died, and those two boys died, and now we have Naomi, a stranger in a strange land, with these two daughters-in-law. So that's the beginning of the story. Do you all already know that? All right. I just want to make sure you're awake. I've got to get some response from you. So now Naomi decides, I've got to go back home to Bethlehem. Three times she says to her daughters, you guys stay here. Three times. And you should know that as a result of this story now, if you want to convert to be a Jew, to Judaism, you're supposed to be, you have to come three times to the rabbi before they will let you convert. Because in this story, Ruth is, has she had to keep, stay with Naomi even after Naomi said to her three times, go away. So, first of all, Naomi says, you girls stay here, have lives, remarry, and Orpah and Ruth cling, uh, stay with her. They don't cling yet. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Then the second time, Naomi says, come on, girls, you all stay here, have new lives, I'm going back home. And this time, Orpah, what she kisses Naomi and says goodbye. But then it says, but Ruth, and this is what I want, this is the title of the sermon, but Ruth what? Clung to her. And then the third time, time Naomi says will you just stay and then Ruth gives her a great beautiful speech that we've heard in so many wedding ceremonies so they end up going back to Bethlehem we're gonna have plenty of time for more details but now let's figure out what's going on in this story so there's Ruth who refuses to let go there's Boaz who dedicates, you don't know him yet, but you'll find out. Boaz is going to dedicate his resources to helping others. And there's Naomi, who works behind the scene as matchmaker. See, the crazy thing about this story is, it's called the Book of Ruth, but it could be called the Book of Naomi. And the other thing about this story, each of the characters lacks something. They all are missing something. Ruth is the young widow in a new land. She needs a family. Boaz is the older man whom seems to have eluded Cupid's arrow all these years. He needs companionship. And Naomi has lost the most. Naomi has lost her husband. She has lost her children. She needs family too. And it is when these lonely hearts enlist in a project of caring for each other 
that they find what they needed. They lose their lives to find them. Each of them becomes dedicated to helping the other one. And then in the end, they all receive what they need. That's the incredible thing about this story. They seek first the kingdom of compassion, and then everything falls into place. So, um, here we go. It's called the book of Ruth, and I'm going to get to Ruth in a second, but let's keep our eyes on Naomi. Naomi is a widow. Naomi is a widow who moves, has to make a move late in life to be closer to relatives. Naomi is a woman who said she felt like she had no hope left. I don't know if you remember that verse is there. She says to her daughters-in-law, you all stay here. I have no hope left. I have no prospects. Naomi thinks she has nothing to look forward to. Everything is behind her. Naomi, another time, is described as someone who's empty. She can remember a time when her life was full. Sometimes it was too full. She never had the time to say, what's next? There was always people coming to her saying, what's next? And now she has no idea what's next. She describes herself as empty. Naomi, her name means sweet. When she finally gets back to Bethlehem, she says, will you all stop calling me Naomi, sweet? Call me Mara. Mara means bitter. But now, this morning, that, that's, that's a beginning of Naomi. But I want to talk about Ruth, and I want to say three things about her. Three words typify Ruth. Her name means friendship, by the way. The first word is in verse 8. Oh, I wanted him to keep the scripture up there. Yeah, have we got verse 8 yet? So, where is it? All right. Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, is everybody there? Go each back of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you. All right, that word deal kindly is a special word in the Bible. It's, the word is chesed. It says, may the Lord be extra special faithful to you. This is the quality of the book of Ruth. And this, that... When you deal with God, you get better than you expected. And it is the quality of Ruth who displays the same chesed. Because Ruth goes the second mile. She, didn't, she wasn't compelled to stay with Naomi, but she does. Another verse I want us to look at is in verse 14. Boy, you're good, Diana. Verse 14... All right, but Ruth clung to her. Ruth clung to her. That's the same word that was back in Genesis 1. And it says that for this reason, a man leaves his parents and clings to his wife and they become one flesh. Ruth became one flesh with Naomi. Ruth said, what happens to you happens to me. This is the definition of faith. We see it so many times in the Bible. We see it in Jacob. There's a story about Jacob in Genesis about him wrestling with an angel. And it says he refused to what? Let go. He refused to let go. 
What is that quality that says, I will not let go? That's this word, to cling. Because faith doesn't mean you're smarter. Faith doesn't mean you're more righteous. Faith doesn't mean you always do the right thing. Faith doesn't mean you have some special wisdom and insight. What does faith mean? You refuse to let go. Faith means you simply will take the next step. And the final verse and word I want us to look at is in verse 18. When Naomi saw, do you see the last two lines? When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her. That is determined. Who needs determined? That's not what that word means. That word is so strong. That's hit a mates. And it means when Naomi saw that Ruth was undefeatable. That Ruth would not be, she would not be moved. That's the kind of faithfulness we're talking about. About just digging in and refusing to let go. So here they are. The widow, Naomi, the stranger, Ruth, and the orphan, because orphans come in all ages, a man named Boaz. Widow, stranger, orphan, the trio whom the prophets always reminded people to take care of, but in this story, they band together. These discards, these broken down Bremen town musicians, and they make a symphony that scares off the bad guys. Each lacks, each needs, each is empty, and each was created in the image of God to help someone else and complete and complement someone else. Listen to the book of Ruth. Because after the stanzas about Ruth and Boaz, and Naomi. We're going to hear all of them. There's one more stanza in the song of the book of Ruth. There's one more character in the book of Ruth. And that's the one who planted the seed. Who harvests bundles of redemption from the smallest gleanings. Who takes our mustard seeds and moves mountains. The one who, as the book of Psalms says, which was sung by Ruth's great-grandson, David. The one who is the definition of chesed, of faithfulness. The one who clings to us and refuses to let go. The one who refuses to let go of us all our sins and griefs to bear. That's another stanza of this song. What a friend we have in Jesus. What's the message of the book of Ruth? It summons courage from us. It invites us to get off the dance floor and, per and participate and engage and focus on the needs of others and then we find our needs met. But even more, the book of Ruth is going to tell us the same thing that Paul wrote to a bunch of ancient Romans about one who clings to us and will never let us go. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor present nor future, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.